Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric C. here. Hope you guys are doing good. I am doing just great. So today we're going to be talking about some of the do's and don'ts of working on your guitar. Yeah, and we're going to have a little special guest here that is going to explain why you don't do what he does. Hi, where are you from? In suburban Chicago. What's your name? Everybody impressive. But never duplicate. 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 Strings are actually tuned up. Now, I don't believe in doing the whole string stretcher or whatever thing. As far as I'm concerned, when I stretch my strings, I actually just only tune it up one whole step to where I normally play it. So, since I play everything in E flat, I tune everything to E sharp. That way it stretches the string out, and then when I tune it back down, it's nicely stretched out. So, so Terry 3G's theory here is if you tune your guitar up one full step, and then drop it back down to what you would normally play as far as tuning goes, that you do not have to stretch your strings afterwards in order to stay in tune. Let's test that theory out, okay? So right here on this tuner right here, because the other tuner probably won't pick it up. It'll just show that it is all the way peaked as far as the, uh, you know, whatever tuning you'd be. Like right now, this would be set at standard E, so I have the next step is an F. So that's going to peak that out, and it's going to show me F here, B, and it's going to show me that's going to be uh, the seventh string, E, A, C, another F. A little sharp, there you go, F. So that's where this thing's set at right now. If I drop the tuning back down to E, standard tuning, um, it should say, tell me that, well, strings are stretched. I shouldn't have to do anything as far as stretching them out and making them to where they will stay in tune later on while I'm playing this guitar. So let's drop this down. I'm going to go back and make sure because now changing the tension on the string has also changed a little bit of the neck radius itself as far as being uh, the relief goes. I don't know why I said radius, I should have said relief. Now, I don't mind if I'm a little bit sharp, but I don't want to be flat. Because that just proves my point. All right, so we're at E. And we're a little bit on the flat side, so let me put that back to make it sharp. Sorry, wrong way. Not too sharp, but more closer to that way you can see the differences here between what I'm going to show you next and what the tuning is going to be. All right, so I am at standard E tuning on this guitar. Maybe close, maybe a little bit sharp, but not less. So let's go ahead and pull this string to stretch it a little bit as far as doing like a string stretch goes. And let me see where it's at now. Oh my God, look at where it's at. It is like not fucking even close. All right, so let's go to the next string. The string here, okay, let's go. I'm gonna leave that stretch like that. All right, so we're a little bit sharp, but not on the minus side. Let's go ahead and stretch that a little bit, like if you're doing a string stretch. And where are we at right, th right now? Look at where we're at right now, not even registering as a fucking note. All right, so next one. I'm gonna go and make this one a little bit sharp. Not too much. All right, there she is. All right, the 12 fret, we're gonna do it again. Stretch it a little bit, put it down. Look at that, it's not even showing up as a fucking note. Well, barely showing up as a note. We'll talk about being flat. All right, so do you get my point as far as this goes? All right, now if we go over to the G string, let me go in and tune that up to where it's supposed to be. I want it to be more on the plus than the minus. 
There you go. Very good. All right. So if I go ahead and take that G-string to 12 fret and give it a little bit of a pull, some mimicking somewhat of a string stretch and maybe give it a little bit of vibrato. All right. Where are we at now? We are fucking flat as hell. So your theory, Terry 3G's, don't follow it. Stretch your strings out. Grab your strings. Put your hand over your neck. Grab your string. Kind of give it a little bit of a tug. And move your hand down. You can move your hand down both at the same time if you want. This is going to guarantee you a nice string stretch without breaking the strings. Don't put a lot of pressure on it. But just give it enough to kind of like just take out the little extra slack that's in them. And now they are flat as fuck. Alright guys. Don't be a Terry. Also, when I was putting the tuners in, I had to re largen the holes. I actually just re larged them, not fully the 10 millimeter, which is good because probably a thing you don't want to do with guitar tuners is probably make the hole too big that they slop around. You won't get good connection with the wood in the neck, and in turn, could take away from sustain, could take away from note definition. So anyways. All right, you guys, this is where Terry 3G's is wrong again on so many levels. If you don't have a 10 millimeter drill bit, get one because you don't want to put your tuners in tight. If you end up putting your tuner in, you see there's a little bit of a gap between the tuner and the headstock, and you force that in there. Well, now you're putting pressure on holes, the six of them in line to be exact, that is going to want to push, push, push away that part of the smaller area of the headstock and breaking that part off. Now, that headstock is a solid piece of wood. It doesn't have any glued ears to it. At least it didn't look like it. So if he's going to end up forcing in a set of tuners and having to put a little pressure behind them in order to push them in all the way flush up against the wood, yeah, you're putting some pressure in those holes and you're about to learn a mistake that you ended up doing a long time ago. How you forget. Now watch this. So when I was wet sanding back the... Uh headstock to the natural to the uh, cover the uh, water got in stupidly I let water get in here and while well, it puffed up and this whole wing itself this wing on the right side of the headstock or as you see here on the camera it all puffed out and it separated so I actually had to re-glue the wing into place and you can still slightly see again uh, I didn't use wood glue I didn't have wood glue on hand but I used uh, Gorilla G Glue Terry 3 just blamed that on basically too much water on sanding a headstock. Well, if you're sanding a headstock down the bare wood, you're not going to use water to do this, okay? You're going to use dry sanding. Works a lot faster. You're not trying to polish anything. You're not trying to, uh, like, do what I did as far as customizing a guitar top goes or whatever. You don't use water. Now, if you're using water, you don't use a lot of water. Now, I have used water on headstocks, I've used water on bodies, and I've never had a problem where the wood separated at the seams where they were glued. In his case, it was the ears on the headstock where the tuners are. Never had that problem. Only time when you have a problem like that is when you force something inside of a hole that is too small and then the ears pop off. That's the only way you're going to have that problem, period. Now, as far as tuners and sustain goes, now, this is what I believe, and I know a lot of other guitarists out there believe the same thing. Your tuning stability starts at the tuners of a guitar, okay? Now, once you get that guitar in tune and say your neck, your bridge, everything is secured in place and it's where you want it to be, the only thing those tuners are going to do is keep that guitar in tune or change to different tuning. As far as sustain goes, well, 
this is where a lot of people will sit there and argue the fact of, well, sustain starts at the nut and ends at the bridge, period. There is no other sustain to the guitar besides those two points. Now, your neck pocket, okay, if it is a bolted on neck pocket, you don't want to have the neck pocket too tight because you risk cracking the finish on the side of the neck or on this side of the neck. That happens with too tight of a uh, neck pocket, not because you crank down it too much, but no, that also can help. If that neck pocket is really, really snug and you're having a hard time putting that neck in that pocket, well, that's going to be a problem. And you need to open that up just a little bit in order for that neck to slide in there and be secure. Now, again, your sustain starts at the nut and ends with the bridge. Where it comes over here, well, if I pluck the string over here, I barely even feel anything on the other side of the nut. All right, now I can't do this because this guy doesn't have a tune Mac bridge on there, but uh, I'm sure it's the same thing on this side as well. Now, as far as the holes being too big, well, some tuners use sleeves. Now the holes are drilled out bigger for this sleeve to fit inside there. And the only point of connection between the tuner and the headstock is, well, the top part of the stud, the uh, tuning peg is hitting this, and then the bottom part of the tuner is mounted to the back of the neck. No one's complaining about sustain with those, are they? Nope. So, yeah, this is where you're wrong. Please, don't listen to this guy. Get yourself the right drill bit. Get yourself the right tools for the job. Tuners should not go in hard, they should go in easy, they should slide right in. There's a reason why they tell you on the package what tools are you going to end up needing in order to do the job. They slide in, they might be a tiny bit snug, but they're not going to be hard to get in at all. And you don't have to use the screw on the back of the tuner to force the tuner into the hole. Yeah. Uh, ring stretcher!